Hey guys, it's Sean from She's in Her Element. I had something super crazy and super fun happen. And that's that I had a shout out from a channel that was challenging me to a question and answer as well as challenging me to keep it going by nominating three people afterwards as well. And it's super fun because it's just kind of like a, a get to know me just a teeny little bit. So I was like, oh yeah, I would definitely like to participate for sure. So it, it was Tanya with Nightfall Homestead that nominated me. I want to thank her for doing so because this is going to be super fun. And she challenged me to answer 12 questions. So that's what I'm going to do. This goes with the hashtag Gail's Questions 22. So super fun. Who doesn't like playing a game and at the same time getting to know a little bit about somebody? So, the first question is, what are my two favorite ice cream flavors? Um, honestly, I, I just really don't like ice cream. Um, I mean, I will go to our local Dairy Queen sometimes and either only get a peanut buster parfait like once a year, I crave that. Or I do like um, cherry dip, that's why I like, like vanilla cones, cherry dip, and the dilly bars that are cherry dip, so sometimes I get them. But I actually really, I'm not an ice cream eater, I never have been, it's not my thing. So if I had to like super pick a flavor that wasn't Dairy Queen though, um, I think it would be something like banana. I like banana flavor. Yeah. So one is, what is my favorite flower? Um, I actually could not just pick one flower for real. That That's way too tough of a choice. There's so many beautiful flowers out there. Um, I love roses and I love, oh my God, I love the smell of lilacs. And that just so reminds me of my childhood and my grandmother Smith's house. And I love a good lilac. Um, calla lilies. Calla lilies actually hold something special to me because that was the flower that I chose for our wedding. And they're actually planted out in our front flower bed so I get to see them every year and I absolutely love that um, so I guess if I had to pick one flower I would say calla lily if I could have any animal as a pet and cost wasn't an issue what would it be um I guess it would kind of like be an, an alpaca, I would say, like a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I have a wicked big barn out back um, that isn't used yet. I'm still I'm still figuring the details out for what I want to do there. Um, but I would say alpacas because they're like so big and so fuzzy and so cute. I've had horses before. I had them growing up, um, so. I, I do enjoy horses, but they're an awful lot of work, and I'm a pretty busy woman as it is, so I, I'm going to pick an alpaca. What is my favorite dish to make when I have company? That's easy. Um, Scott and I like to really go all out and get like a really nice filet, a super nice cut. Um, we'll do it like with asparagus on the grill that's just done with a nice olive oil, salt and pepper. Do it actually like just perfect, absolutely perfect. It's delicious. And I, when I have company, like I don't wanna be in the kitchen just cooking, cooking, cooking. I wanna actually enjoy my company. So I like something that's delicious, impressive, easy, gotta be easy and I'm good with that but I am legendary for my charcuterie boards so I take pride in that and they have it before and after so if you're still hungry <laughs> there you go but I would definitely pick filet and like asparagus 
What is my all-time favorite movie and why? Oh gosh. There are some seriously great movies out there. Um, it's hard to pick one, but I do, <laughs> there, is, there is one that I really like and that's Casino. And I just love me some Joe Pesci. I absolutely love me some Robert De Niro. And Sharon Stone is an amazing actress as well. Um, it's just a great flick. Like, you can see that stuff like that really probably did happen back then. I'm not saying this is a true story. I'm literally simply saying that you could actually see this being part of Las Vegas back in the day. Um, and the reason I like it is because you can kind of see that this could have actually been a real thing to somebody. Maybe it is a real thing. I don't even know. I, whatever. Um, but I love that you can watch their lifestyle and just be t so totally envious of it but at the same time be so grateful that you are not living this lifestyle you just get to watch it and go home um i think that's what attracts me to it is just the glimpse at somebody else at a whole nother level i'm just i'm just a simple little girl here i could never live that way but I could imagine living that way, minus the crime and stuff. Like, that's that's not my cup of tea, so. <laughs> I would say casino. What is my favorite book or series and why? Uh, hmm. I really can't just pick a favorite book. I am actually an avid reader. I love, love, love to read. I always have. But I am all over the board with what I read. I love biographies. I love true crime. I don't know, go figure. I just do. Um, I like, I don't know. I really enjoyed the Harry Potter series. I read that with Zest. Um, I like all different books. I can't really just pick one. Books are amazing. There's so many great ones out there. It's a great world that I'm just happy to be part of anytime I pick something up. So I can't answer that because I like them all. Who is my favorite fictional character and why? That is easy, easy. My favorite all-time fictional character is Clark W. Griswold. <laughs> I know some of you are just kind of like, what? But I can seriously relate to this guy's good intentions. And, you know, he just loves his family. He just wants to have a good old time with them. And the best intentions end up taking a 180 degree turn. And it never turns out the way he wants. And I can relate to that as a normal person living life. Like... That's real life right there. It's funny to watch, but I can relate on some levels. So he's my favorite fictional character because I can relate to his plight in life. <laughs> what is my favorite thing to grow in my garden? Um, this is my first year having a garden. I haven't had one in a really, really, really long time. And the fact that I'm challenged with this garden, I have to get creative and they have to be like a container garden or maybe even hay bale garden, definitely some raised beds. I, I just can't dig up my husband's lawn. <laughs> Whatever. I can do this. So cucumbers and beans and squash and tomatoes, peppers, um, things like that, all kinds of herbs. I mean, there's a ton more seeds, but just in the realm of basic things that I thought I could do, some lettuces, some kale, um, onions, garlic, like I have no idea what's gonna work and what's not. So anything that I get, I'm gonna be grateful for, 
but it's also going to be a learning experience for me to let me know where I can definitely improve what what was a success what was a failure so you have to ask me this question again in a year I don't know what to answer for that one most of you have done seed inventory now what do I still want to get there's actually nothing that I still want to get I have all of my seeds I got them I've had them in time I'm happy about that and I don't want to bite off more than I can definitely chew um, or set myself up for failure so I'm very happy with the ones that I did pick there's I mean I wish I had a 40 by 40 plot that was something I could dig up and you know my garden would look way different but for what I have to work with I am very content with what I have and there's nothing more that I want now. I mean, I'm always dreaming of what I would love to have, but I'm not at that point. This is this is the first year and, and we're just going in it like this. Go, come on, you can do this. You can do this. You got this, Sean. <laughs> so I guess you have to ask that question next year too and I'd be able to answer it a whole lot better. What are the top three activities that I look forward to every year? Um, I would definitely have to say that one of them would be like vacation. Um, you know, my husband works a full-time job. We also own a business, so he works full-time for that. We really don't get to take off for really good vacations quite often, other than hopefully once a year. Um, we have a gorgeous motor home and a nice boat we've never even used. <laughs> but we don't have the time. So I look forward to like the one week that we get a year to do something. And this year we're definitely getting in the RV and we're definitely taking off. And somebody's going to come chicken sit for me and it's all going to be good. But I like my vacation. I look forward to summers because our business is at home so you know my husband's around during the day we can see each other all throughout the summer which is great and the grandchildren just can have so much fun like they really do have a lot of things to do here these kids are spoiled in a good way in a bad way they're spoiled I mean pup is a pushover for real Nana's a little bit stricter he would tell you that's a lie, but it's really not. Like, he, they have him wrapped around their finger. So, you know, we have a nice pool. We have um, swings. We have slides. We have blow-ups and bounce houses and things like that. I mean, Papa's theory is why rent it if you can buy it. If you're going to rent it more than twice, you just bought it, so buy it. And I do get that. But these kids have enough. We can stop buying it. Um, so summer's my second favorite. And my third favorite is, it's not really an activity, but I guess it is. It's Christmas time in general. Like, I just, I love that time of year right after Thanksgiving. I mean, I even get excited before Thanksgiving. I've been known to even put my tree up before Thanksgiving. And there's no shame in my game for doing so. Um... It just depends on my mood for that year. And I love the feeling. I, I love Christmas. I love the decorations, the cookies, the baking, the family, the traditions, the ones I'm passing on to my grandchildren. It's the whole thing wrapped up into one. And it's not an activity, but it's just my third favorite thing in the year. So... Those are my three favorite. I actually can't forget I do like my anniversary, so <laughs> that's technically four, but you know, whatever. My favorite hot beverage in the winter. Um, I only drink coffee or tea if it comes to a hot beverage. I don't like anything else, and I'm kind of like a coffee snob. Um, I like a strong cup of coffee. I'm a Starbucks girl right now um I just like as strong as you can get it although I really have to say this I found a really cool coffee and it's the Green Mountain Sumatra Reserve 
and I'm really kind of loving on that right now. Uh, it's a good strong cup of coffee. It's perfect. And my level of coffee is, is I guess, the equivalent to Lorelei Gilmore. Um, so, you know, that's a perspective for you if you know what I'm talking about. But, and I like tea. I like a good tea, a good English tea. Um, I do like a green tea or a chai tea. I will drink a chai tea. Um, that's kind of it, though. I... I don't like ciders and toddies or I don't know what else they have. I'm not a big cocoa person either. Like, I don't think I've drank a cup of cocoa in a couple of years. So, I, coffee and tea. If I woke up with snow on the ground, what would my preferred activity be? Um, well... I live in New England, so to wake up with snow on the ground is actually not that uncommon during the winter. Unless it's Christmas, you're not going to get a white Christmas. We haven't had one in a while, so... Uh, we did just have a really good ripping blizzard, though, so uh, we had some snow. But it's not uncommon for me to see it. So I guess on a snowy day, what I would like to do and what I try to do is I like to bake and I like to cook and just chill. I like my wood stove going, maybe a bread going. And don't, and don't get me wrong, I'm not over here like Caroline Ingalls cooking bread all day long and stuff. I do it often, but it's not an everyday thing for me. Um, and I like the smell of that in the house or cooking a good stew, um, putting a great classic movie on. I, I'm a definite classic movie buff, so I enjoy something like that on a snow day. I just want to chill because I don't get the opportunity to chill a whole lot. Because um, even on a snow day, you have to take care of the animals. So I look forward to a little R&R &R when I can sneak it in for real. Manatide, I ain't gonna lie. I'm pooped, but I can still do this and keep going and like I love having these kids and it's great so that's my life it it's just yeah I like I've also been trying to participate as best as I absolutely can sometimes I forget to like post or I don't think anybody really cares to see what I'm eating I don't know but um I've been doing the three rivers. Uh, challenge, which is the pantry challenge, to not shop the food and to work off of your own pantry and your own stock and your own meat and your own preserves, whatever you have. And I've never stepped back and really seriously taken a look in my pantry. Y'all ain't never seen that yet. It's, it is a wreck. It just doesn't have good storage to be able to see stuff and stuff gets shoved and then you forget it and then there's more stuff in front of it and you forget that and when you do remember to like, hey, what's back there? You're astounded and almost embarrassed at the amount of food you actually do have out there. And it, it's not years and years old. I mean, it's all within the last year. Um, but it's time to be used. Like, I don't need to buy anything. And I have been using what I have here. Um, I have my own beef, like I said. We get that from Greener Pastures LLC in Westport, Mass. They're great for locally sourced um, beef. Wonderful, wonderful establishment to get it from. And that's what we've been working on. I have been buying chicken. It's not easy to find, so if I do find it, I'm going to buy it. And, uh, yeah, we've been doing the best we can with the, the pantry challenge, so I've been excited for that. That challenge has been put on by Jessica over at the Three Rivers Homestead, so if you haven't checked out her channel, definitely check that out. Like, she's just an amazing person and mom and homesteader and she really does everything from scratch and she does it with limitations to food allergies because that's what she has to work with and it just it's amazing so if you haven't checked that channel out you definitely definitely need to go over and and check her out you'll like that so um
So that's it. Those are my questions and my answers. And it just gives you a little glimpse, tiny bit as to things that I like and don't like. And so thank you so much, Tanya, for the challenge. And now it's my turn to challenge three. Uh, when I hope you do participate because it is just silly and it is just fun, but it's also really cool to get to know someone that, you know, maybe you're tuning into this person all the time and, you know, you're friends because that's kind of what it feels like after a while on both ends. And it's just cool. So I nominate three to continue with the hashtag Gail's Questions 22 and keep it going. And my three are going to be Angie from Utter Chaos Hobby Farm. Um, I really enjoy watching her. Um, southern, sweet. Um, she'll show you grocery hauls and she'll show you some pretty interesting recipes. She does some canning. She has chickens. She loves her grandson and her daughter and um, her Ami. And it's a great channel. If you haven't subscribed to Utter Chaos Hobby Farm, you gotta check them out because that's actually like really good. I, I enjoy watching them. And I simple. And I would love to hear Angie's answers to these 12 questions as well. So there's number one. Number two is her homestead skills, um, Tony. Now, I really enjoy watching her. She does gardening and preserving and canning and like everything sewing like I think she does it all um, I enjoy her sharing her knowledge with us and yeah you will learn a lot from her if you haven't subscribed to her you definitely need to check her out for sure that's um, her homestead skills Miss Tony so give that channel a check out and I hope that she would answer these 12 questions and continue. The, and I hope that she continues these questions and also the hashtag Gail's Questions 22 and keeps it going. It's fun. So, yeah, if you haven't checked her out, definitely go check out her homestead skills. You'll like that. And the third one is the Purposeful Pantry, um, Miss Darcy. Um, she is like the queen of all things dehydrating and canning and preserving. And if you want to know or learn something, go to her channel. Um, that's a great one. I love watching hers. I've learned quite a bit. You will too. So if you haven't checked out her channel, definitely swing over there. Um, but I would also love to hear her answers to those questions and and for her as well to keep the hashtag Gail's Questions 22 going and we can all learn a little bit more about each other because let's face it, we all spend a lot of time with each other. So, so again, I want to thank Tanya with Nightfall Homestead for nominating me for the question and answers. I hope... I hope you found something kind of fascinating about me. I don't know, maybe that I don't like ice cream. I don't know. It was really fun to participate in the hashtag Gail's Questions 22. And I'll see you guys real soon.